Verse 13. I'm on ho- loneliness and hardness. That's what I'm talking about. Loneliness and hardness. I'm taking my time. I'm taking my time. I'm taking my time. Don't no, no worry. Enter ye in at the straight gate. Yes. Jesus. Straight. And the word straight is the Greek word stenos. In medicine, we have something called stenosis. Yes, stenosis. Pyloric stenosis or stenosis of a duct. Like all the ducts where something comes out, liquids come out, breast uh, ducts, salivary ducts, uh, in the stomach, when the stomach is coming, when you, when you eat, all right, the stomach is full. But you, of course, the stomach has to have a gate. Yeah. Do you see? Mm-hmm. Otherwise, what's going to happen is that when the food goes in your stomach, it will go out so quickly. But there's acid in the stomach, and the acid needs some time to break down the food. You get what I'm saying? Because after the stomach, there's no big pouch again. The stomach is the big container. And those who are fat usually have bigger stomachs. Or they have what we call a fish hook stomach. It's very long and down like that. So it takes a lot. It has a lot of space. Storage. So the stomach holds the the food. The stomach holds the food for some time. And then it grinds it and pours acid. A little acid, then grind. A little acid, then grind. A little acid, then grind. Then it becomes like water. Yeah. And the meat and all that, especially meat. So if you eat meat, you stay full longer. It takes a longer time. Yes. Art students, I'm sure you don't know all these things. Yeah. And those of you who do history and all these kind of things, you don't know all these things. Yes. They didn't teach you. No. Now, the, the place where finally, when we feel that you've been digested, you have to come out, that's the pylorus. Yeah, and some people, they have a disease, like when you have, yeah, they have a disease, it's called pyloric stenosis. Like, that, that gate is stenosis, closed, it's, it becomes small. Sometimes from repeated, I don't want to say things so that you, don't be worried, I don't want you to be worried about things. But just a pyloric stenosis, closing, small, very small gate. So such a person can, you know, eat and then the stomach is not emptying. Yeah. It's called gastric outlet obstruction. It's, it's, it's obstructing the going out. So you may eat and small eating, you are full can be a bad symptom. So thank God when you eat and you are not full. Yeah. You, may not, you may not want to know what's going to happen to you. Yeah. You eat a little and you are full. So, oh, I'm full. Hey, why, why are you full? You should have been full by now. It's like listening to preaching and you are full. I'm just listening to... There's a serious problem with you in your life. God forbid. Huh? You are full. You just start a bacenta and you are you are okay. This is it. Just a little and you are full. So the word that says enter by the straight gate is the, the gate which has got a narrowing. Yes, and it holds back people. So a lot of people can't go. That's what happens in the stomach. The stomach is, has the stenosis and you can't the food can't go. So it stays there. The next time you eat, this is full. You're, oh, I'm already full. I just had one slice of bread. I feel full. It's, it's a problem. You can't be full after a sh- short message. So people who are just one 30 minutes church, 30 minutes message, 20 minutes sermon, quickly, they have a serious disease, spiritual disease. Serious. And stomach cancer is one of the things that causes that. God forbid, yes. Yeah. So the gate is stenosed, small. So there's a pile up behind it. Now, God is saying that 
pass through the gate which has the stenosis. So the word there is stenos. Stenosis. If you if you are if you are a science student, you would know the meaning of stenos. Pass through the gate which has the stenosis. The narrowing. Yes. Narrow from obstacles standing close about. That's what it says in the Greek. Stenos from obstacles. And when it's very small gate, few of you, so when you want cover, it goes, Aish, I'm out. So you find that you, one at a time. It's not a group. You, we can't all go through that gate. You go one at a time. One person goes. 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 And see that. Are we all going? So no, you are going. It's not about me and you and you and you. Are you also going? I'm going. I'm not going. Are you going? I'm going. Are you not going? I'm, go- I'm, not, I'm not going. Are you going? There's nothing like that. To become a sparrow on the housetop standing alone, it must have been one sparrow that went through. Yeah. So stop looking around and ask, asking who is that? Who is going? Who is not going? Who is doing this? Who is not doing this? Are you, are you, are you obeying? Are you not obeying? No, it's a narrow gate. Jesus said, enter in the place that is very small. And it will always be the case. It will always be the case. You know, when we had a double mega missionary camp, I preached and preached and preached. Is that when Peter went to Australia? Yeah. I preached the whole camp, you know. But after the camp, I thought, and I've wasted my time. One person, Peter, Pastor Peter, he came and said, you know, I want to go to Australia after what I heard. And he went to Australia. That's how come we have a church in Sydney, Papua New Guinea, Melbourne, Adelaide, uh, 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 Fiji. This, oh, just one person passed. And he was a sparrow alone on the housetop. When he went, his wife was pregnant. People criticizing. Why did you want to travel? I don't know why he was pregnant. Nya, 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 had not say, hey man, I'm going to stand on the housetop as a sparrow. Alone. And hard. Hard. Like the British soldiers. I'm happy I have got British soldiers here. I hear it's the one of the best armies in the world. Hard guys. Very hard. Yes. Very hard. You know. So the fact that you are here in England, we should have the best armies Spiritual armies coming from the UK. Best armies. Best armies. Yes. Nowhere should be too hard. Nowhere should be too hard for you. Yeah. Once God says go, say, oh, yeah, why not? Was it here? We go everywhere. We go. It's not a problem. And when you go, you create your own environment. You know, the American soldiers, when they go, they make their own pizza hut, the hamburger, McDonald's, everything inside the soldiers the midst of them and they eat everything there just create your own world yeah i met a missionary from uh, america america and uh, he was living in a village far somewhere he has made a lawn in the forest he has made a beautiful lawn he's made his own little house inside the forest wow. oh yes lawn with grass love grass i mean a lawn like a golf course he's made a small one at where he is for his environment that's what you do. You just create your own little world. Yes. Missionaries must go. Ready to be a fisherman or a farmer. Yeah. That's how they went. That's how William Carey went. So he says, enter by the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many there be that go in there at. Because straight is the gate. Narrow is the way which leads unto life. And few there be that find it. So that's how come you have loneliness. You are the only one that found life. And you went in. How many realize that you are somehow lonely from your family, in your family, your class, in school? Like even though we are many here, there are 1,000 times many more who are not here. Wow. Yes. You are actually alone. But only as we come together, we're surprised. Hey, wow. So many of us are together. Hey, we are together again. So it's nice to come together. You meet people that are like you and you are strengthened. Yeah. But when you go back, you find yourself quite lonely. I'm the only guy who stopped smoking. I'm the only guy who stopped drinking. I'm the only guy who stopped fornicating. I'm the only guy who's closed up the the, the back uh, 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 space. 
No more. Finish. I'm pooping only from this side. Exit only. Ah. Are you listening to me? Yes. People will ask you, why are you so, why do you, why do you behave yourself so humbly like you are? Hey, I learned in my church to be a humble girl. Yes. All I want to be is a humble girl. A humble girl is better than a proud girl. A flowing girl is better than a stiff girl. A proud girl is better, I, I, I say proud, a humble girl is better than a proud girl. An excited girl is better than a moody girl. And they ask you, why are you always smiling? Because an excited girl is better than a moody girl. And I want to be a good, good girl. I learned it in church to be a good, good girl. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Yeah. So everything you may start to look or don't worry. You join the sparrows. It's called sparrow fellowship. Amen. Amen. Are you listening to me? Now, the next person that we, we can learn this from is Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 15. Thy word, verse 16. You, you want to go back to your seats or your comfortable? Yeah. You, like you like it here? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Jeremiah 15, verse 16. Beautiful. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. Can you see the verse? Is it a nice verse? Yeah. Thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. I was so happy to have the word of God. Thy word was the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Wow. wow. For I am called by thy name. Beautiful. Verse 17. I sat not. I sat not. In the assembly of the mockers. Don't sit in the assembly of the mockers. No rejoice. I didn't rejoice in their midst. When you see mockers, just be quiet. Look. I sat alone because of thy hand. I sat what? Alone because of thy hand. When God's hand is on you, you find yourself sitting alone. You'll be shocked. You'll be shocked that this verse will come to, to pass in you don't know how it will come to pass. I sat alone because of thy hand. Thou hast filled me with indignation. Did he sit with friends? No. Those of us who always want to be with friends, we, there comes a time when you have to stand all alone. You not even have any first love member or any Christian friend. You just, I'm alone. It's my, my decision, my life. Yeah. Yes, this is what I want to do. It's what I believe in. Yes, it's my decision. I want to do this for God. And I decided when I finished medical school, I tell you, I had the opportunity to go to America and to go all over, do many things, to work in Switzerland. Yeah. One time I was in Switzerland, you know, with my wife, and then she, um, I don't know, she, we filled some form, she filled some form, something. And, um, and they had to write, what, 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 what do you do? What does your husband do? So she feels she's a lawyer and I'm a doctor. You know what they sent us? They sent us brochures to buy yachts. Yes. Like a doctor in Switzerland and then a lawyer. They sent us brochures for yachts. Because they knew that, I mean, we must be the topmost richest people to live in Switzerland. A lawyer and a doctor. 
Um, so they sent us brochures not to buy furniture or to buy a TV or to buy some wine or something. To buy yachts, yachts. We have this size, we have that size, that size, that size. That's how. That's the potential that I, I had. And I said, no, I'm, I'm going back to Coraligono. I'm going back to Coraligono, back in Ghana. Yeah, I'm going to preach back home in Ghana to my little few little congregation with nobody. Nobody in my little church. No car, no house owner, no rich person, no nothing. Yeah, I'm telling you. This was before our son, our son, our first child was born. We were just newly married. Yeah, we got brochures. We got brochures. Because you see, I, I have a right to live there because I'm, I'm from there as well. Wow. Yeah. That's where I come from. You can see from my face. <laughs> we got brochures to buy yachts. Wow. And when wow. I said, no, I'm going back, I have these few people in the classroom. Wow. Yeah. In a, in, a, in, a, in a place called Corligano. Corligano. Wow. I took a loan. All my mates went abroad, and I stayed there with nobody, with no nothing. I sat alone. I did not rejoice in the assembly of the mockers. People mocked me. And, what is this guy? Who does he think he is? This and that. They are all watching me on Facebook. They are all watching. <laughs> Amazing. You see, you should have known better. <laughs> You should have known better. Yeah. You should have known better. They're saying it now. You should have known better. Yeah. And, and I'm glad I knew better. Yeah. And, and, and you wouldn't be here. So I'd, maybe I'd arrive in heaven as like a decent doctor, me and my beautiful wife. We live together happily ever after. We finally arrive in heaven. When I get to heaven, I say, oh, glory to God, you know. I'm going for my rewards, you know, I lived a moral life, a good life, and I didn't do this, I didn't drink wine, I didn't do that, I didn't commit this sin, commit that sin, and wow, and then I'll say, well, then they start mentioning names. Do you know, when I ask, you know, you mentioned, do you know? Thelma. Thelma what? Thelma Agbaje. Arthur Adam. Ashley Mujinzil. I said, I don't know them. <laughs> Manasseh Dennis. Um, I don't know who. Yvette Boateng. Uh, I, I don't have anything to do with Claudia Pong. No, I don't know. <laughs> Jesse Adora. No, I don't know him. Charlie Sahir. Then I'll get the first slap. Pass! So, me? Why do you slap me? Why do you slap me? Is there violence in heaven? Police, police, 999, police come. There are no police in heaven, please. I'm being slapped left, right, and center for thousands of souls. I'm being questioned for thousands of souls. No, it's serious. Serious. They may mention names. I said, I don't know this person. And then, it's, and then Tammy Edward. I don't know. Tammy Edward. Bernie Zakoma. I don't know her. She fell away. Next slap. You see, heaven is going to be a bittersweet experience. Yeah. A lot of disobedient people arriving in heaven. The main thing is that you've missed hell. But heaven. And you, if you think that God is, God is no fool, you wouldn't obey him all your life. You wouldn't obey him. You wouldn't do his will. Huh? That ain't right. That ain't right. That ain't right. You should have done what he said. You should have obeyed him. Do you know? Yes, do you know? Abraham and Yash. Mom. Mm-hmm. Do you know? Tim Goska. I don't know Tim Goska. I don't know no Tim. <laughs> Kevin Salem. <laughs> Mario De Banjo. I don't know anybody from this pair. Their names you are mentioned. I don't know. Rhoda Elisai. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Just because you didn't want to be alone in your decision. You didn't want to be alone in your decision. Just because you didn't want to be the lonely sparrow. You wanted to be with the whole group. 
So yeah, and I said, well, you got this. So I'm, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm in New Jersey. I'm in, I'm, in, I'm in North Carolina. I'm in California. I'm in Washington. I'm in Maryland. I'm in New York. I'm in Boston. I'm in St. Louis. I'm in Louisiana. I'm in Oklahoma. I'm in Tulsa. I'm in. I'm in Orlando. Wow. I'm a lonely sparrow on the rooftop. And I don't mind. And I tell you, this enter the straight gate, enter the straight gate business, is not only for unbelievers. It's when you come into Christ, there are gates, there are doors, and they are still narrow. And it's up to you to choose a narrow one. Yeah. Within Christ. Because he didn't say, and he says, the, the, the gate is why that leads to life. Even in Christ, there's abundant life. There's a certain life, but it always has the stenosis, like pyloric stenosis. And the reason you can eat, go down, eat more, is because the gate is there and it opens. It opens as the food is coming. Stay a bit, grind a bit. Hey, more coming. This guy is eating. Open. But when there's a problem, it starts to close. You eat just a little, it's closed. So just feel go in and the person actually starts to lose weight that's one of the signs you see a person's losing weight and when he eats a little he's full very bad symptoms yes you never have it in Jesus name. God forbid yeah. enter by the narrow gate Enter by the narrow gate. Enter by the narrow gate. Enter by the narrow gate. God is going to bless you as you enter by the narrow gate. Amen. Amen. Sit down, sit down for a minute. You can always come back later, but I want you to go back for now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Are you still around or you are leaving? Now, what did Jeremiah say? He said, why is... He said, I sat not in the assembly of the mockers. Now, Jeremiah chapter 1, let's look at verse uh, 4. Verse number 4. What does it say? Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth from the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord, God, behold, I cannot speak. I am a child. And the Lord said unto me, Say not I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. I prophesy to every child, and every one of you that you are not too small to minister and to be sent by God. Yes. You are not used by God. You cannot ever be too small to be used by God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Are you listening to me? But the Lord said to me, say that I'm a child. Then he said in verse 8, Be not afraid of their faces. Don't be afraid of their faces. For I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have set thee today over the nations, over the kingdoms, to root out, to pull down, to destroy, and to throw down, to build, and to plant. So what God is saying is very simple. What he's saying is that don't be afraid of people's faces. And now those of you who 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 have attitudes, you see that you can't pretend before God 
Yes. You know, God is very wild. Though. You can come to God with a thousand reasons, but he will strip you naked. Yes. He'll strip you naked. And Remember the guy that Jesus sent and he said, he gave him two talents, one talent. When a guy, when a master came back, he said, oh, I know you, you are a hard man. You know, watch out to people like talking a lot. I know you, you are a hard man. You reap what you have in sown. So because of that, I went to keep it in, in the bank. I put it in the ground. I brought it. Here you are. The safe. I've not lost anything. You can't accuse me of anything. Jesus said, wicked man. You see, so you can talk a lot. There are people who like arguing. But when you get to heaven, your arguments will fall apart. He just said, you are wicked and slothful servant. I mean, no argument about I'm, I'm hard. Why do you say I'm hard? How can you call me hard? I, I, why do you say I'm hard? Why do you keep it? What about insurance? Why didn't you do this? But I haven't stolen anything. Have I lost anything? What you had is what you have. Why do you, you want to have that argument at all? It's straight away, you are stripped naked and they say, wicked, you are wicked. Yeah. So the same way, you see, some of us, we communicate with wickedness, with faces, with attitudes. You are not a nice person because your attitude, your face, your flow, do you understand, makes you not a nice person. And you are not, not a happy person. And I told you, avoid the unhappy and the unlucky. Yes. And when we say, so what shows that I'm unhappy? I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy. I've had my quiet time. I read my Bible. I drank Coke this morning. I'm happy. You know, but you see, God said, don't be afraid of their faces because he knows that even the faces are speaking. Even your face is talking. Your face is talking for you. And you may be arguing that, but I didn't say anything. Yeah, but your face is saying something. And God didn't even say, don't be afraid of their words. He said, don't be afraid of their faces. The face, the face you have is talking, the attitude, the flow. So I'm talking to the girls because you are the ones who have these lot of faces. You think I don't know you? Yeah. Brothers, don't marry a moody, I tell you, moody girl. Don't marry a moody girl. I'm giving you advice. Don't marry suspicious people. Yeah. Marry somebody who is excited to see you. Somebody is happy to know that you are around. Not somebody when you come, it becomes an interrogation and questions. Where have you been? Why are you now coming? Uh, give us evidence. Show me your Google map. Give me your phone. Let me check. Let me check itemization of your agenda. Let me smell your shirt to see who has come. Let me smell your shirt. Let me smell your shirt. Let me check your shirt for any lipstick on your shirt. All I want is a happy girl. All I want is a flowing girl. All I want is a cheerful girl. All I want is an exciting girl. Yeah. No, you see, all this is marriage. I don't have to sit down to do marriage counseling. No. This is career counseling. I'm showing you this advice why some people don't marry. And I'm telling the brothers, identify all those traits. Today you see the face has become like that. Tomorrow the face is like Tomorrow the film. Even Jeremiah the prophet was warned. Be not afraid of their faces. Not their speeches or their words. Their face. It's called smile on arrival. When you arrive, there, there must be a smile. Any sister who doesn't smile on arrival, don't marry that person. I'm advising you, I'm advising, don't marry. It's a waste of time. 
first love marriages first love marriage is like continuous beloved doses lasting love this song you will, I, I prophesy you will never sing this song and mean it that we don't talk anymore we don't chat anymore we don't flow anymore no 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 god forbid i reject it i block it i cast it out i repel it in the name of jesus Anyway, this is just by the side because I was telling you about how to be lonely. Like Jeremiah. He was not afraid of their faces. So don't look at their faces. That's why sometimes when I preach, I don't look at certain faces. Maybe if there's no flow on this, I, I, st- I, I, I go to this side. If there's no flow here, then I, I, I move more to this side. If there's no flow here, I go more in this direction. Because of the faces. Hey. Please, everybody must go home and practice smiling. Practice it, I'm telling you. Yes. Practice smiling and be happy. Yes. Look at the mirror and smile. And the same smile that you use for selfies use it for real life what do you think huh I'm advising you yes I mean, all this is you see you say you are coming like going missionary but all these are married how to be happy you see that song we are not close to, it is the story of many people they may not say it keep your eyes open put on your uh, 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 spiritual glasses you see they don't flow anymore they don't talk anymore they're not happy anymore they don't hug anymore they don't kiss anymore they don't anymore they don't fly anymore they don't chat anymore they don't text anymore God So Jeremiah, even the missionary work that he was going to do, they were warning him, not even marriage, oh, faces of people. Faces. You see the film? Hey! Be not afraid of their faces. <laughs> not their words not their speech not their words also. do you take so and so to be your husband I do do you do that I will will you always do that I will that's their words then the, the next one the face when the face is normal not being what when they remove the hair like this put it down and the face has come why God why God why has that forsaken me <laughs> my God my God why has thou forsaken me the prayer you'll be praying in the house my God my God why has thou forsaken me listen you may laugh, but I rarely joke. 
Really? Yeah. The Bible says neither jesting nor foolish talking. Yes. They are all real things. <laughs> now, Abraham. Loneliness and hardness of Abraham. I've shown you the loneliness and hardness of Jeremiah. Loneliness and hardness of who? Moses. Mo- loneliness and hardness of who, who else? And the sparrow. The sparrow. <laughs> the sparrow was the first person. The psalmist said, I am a sparrow alone on the housetop. I'm a pelican in the wilderness. I'm owl in the desert. But I'm ready to serve God. Amen. Now Abraham. Hmm. Isaiah. Uh, chapter 51. Do you like Isaiah? Yeah. We, we keep on going to Isaiah. Isn't it? Isaiah seems to be important. Jesus quoted from him more than anyone. Paul quoted from Isaiah more than anyone else. Very important prophet, yes. Isaiah 51. Look at it. This is Abraham on his own in hardness. Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord. Look unto the rock from whence you are hewn, and to the hole of the pit whence ye are digged. Verse 2, look unto Abraham your father and unto Sarah that bear you, for I called him alone and I blessed him and I increased him. I called him alone and I blessed him and increased him. Is it Jeremy or Jeremiah? Jeffrey. Jeffrey. Don't forget that. You are a twin. You see, never think of yourself as twins. You get what I'm saying? Think of yourself as a person. He said, look to Abraham. Don't you see us? We are twins. There are two of us. I said, I'm going. Are you going? Hey. Will you go? I'm going. Hey. <laughs> so I'm saying, are you, are you staying? No. Look to Abraham. I call. We don't even know whether Abraham was a twin. Because he had brothers. So, I called him alone and I blessed him. That's something you have to really have in mind. Actually, God doesn't even like when you link yourself with people. You know? In fact, all of Abraham's problems was the problem he had from taking people with him. That he shouldn't have taken with him. All the problems he had. Yes. So, so, don't think of yourself that me and my family are called this and that. My, my children, you know, I, I give them to the Lord. If the Lord wants to use them, I mean, it would be my, my, my joy. But if, my, if they don't, it's fine. Not fine, but it's okay. Yeah. But God called me. He didn't call me with my wife. He didn't call me with my wife. No. If, if she wants to serve the Lord and wish she is, that's beautiful. It, it helps. We all go to church together. We all like church. We all like God. We all like the things of God. It's easier. Yeah. But if you have somebody, who, why are you going to church? You know, I remember one lady, her husband got saved and she said, no man, I want a husband that goes to nightclubs. I want to go to nightclubs. I want, I want my husband to go to nightclubs. I'm, I, I, all my stories are true. You know, are, oh, there's no story that is a joke. I want a husband who goes, because she, she, she met her husband and was going to nightclubs with her husband. That's one. I want to go to night. I want to go and dance. Yeah. She wasn't happy when her husband got saved. Mercy. Huh? Yeah. I want I want to go I want to go dancing, man. 
But then she came to church and she gave her life. Today she's a lady pastor, but she, at the time she wanted to go dancing. Glory to God. But look to Abraham. Those of you who seek after God, those of you who are seeking after righteousness and seeking after God, look at Abraham. I called him alone. So don't think, oh, my sisters, my brother, my this, my cousin, my that. I hardly know anybody here with Mills who's come into, my, into the ministry with me. Hardly. More, more of even my wife's family. I see them more in the church. But my family, not my immediate biological family, but like cousins and uncles. And, no, I don't see no Hayward Mills, nobody, nowhere. Yeah. I'm, I'm all alone. When I have various crises, various issues, I don't see no Hayward Mills, nowhere. I see Bishop Saki, I see Bishop Eddie, I see my friends, I see my church people. I don't see no Hayward Mills, nowhere. Do you see any Hayward Mills anywhere? You know any Hayward Mills, nowhere? I don't see no he was knows nowhere. <laughs> I don't see NATO. Yeah. I mean, look at all. I want to see my family, you know, my family, you know, we come from here. We gotta be in the church, man. We are this, we'll die, we'll die. I don't see no NATO. Yeah. Yeah. Don't think too much about the people. You know, Jesus said, Who's my father, man? Who's my ma- who's my brother? Who my sister? Who my friend? Me, who my brother, who my brother man, who my sister man, who my brother man. What did Jesus say? Who's my brother? Who's my sister? Put that scripture up there, beautiful. Who's my sister? Who's my brother man? Huh? It's the one who obeys the word of God. That's my brother man. Yeah. And it's true. You'll find out church is more than a family. Look, he said, Who's my mother? Who's my brother man? Who's my sister? Huh? Man. Verse 49. Verse 49. He stretched forth his hand toward his disciples. His disciples. He said, this, you see, this is my, this is my brother. This is my mama. This is my mama. This is my brother. His disciples. This is my brother. This is my... You've got to believe it. Don't be too wise when God calls you alone. Hey. If they don't want to come along, don't think, oh, I need my, my family. <laughs> Jesus said, who's my brother, man? Who's my mama? God giving you a new mama in church. Amen. God giving you a new brother in church. Amen. I mean, when, I went, when, we, when we were attacked in Ghana, in Corleone, we went through various crises. I didn't see no cousin. I didn't see no... You know how many cousins I have? How many people call Hayward Mills? Even when I got to the airport, they were out, the guy was asking me, he said, this is a very common name. He said, have you been to prison before? Have you been to this? Have you been to this? I said, I've not been all those things. I don't. Answer is no. He said, well, there's a lot of names like your name. In America, they asked me that question. There's a lot of names like this name. Yeah. It's a very common. He said, it's a common name like Smith. I said, really? I didn't know that, man. Glory to God. But who do you see in your real life? Who's my mama? Who's my, and see, and in, 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 including my mother. He said, who is my mother? Put that scripture there. Who's my mother? Who's my mother? Who's my brethren? Hey, there are people who are going to mother you. Who are going to brother you. Huh? Who's my brethren? Yeah. Is it only brethren he put there? Who's my mother? Brethren. Yeah. Who's my mad mother man? Is this what scripture did Luke? Matthew, check Mark. Check Mark. Yeah. What does this one say? Who's my brother? Mother? Sister? No sister there? Yeah, the sister here. So you're going to have new sisters. New sisters. New brother man. New mothers. Yeah. Accept them. Stop fighting it. God calls you to be lonely in a sense, but he replaces them all. Yeah. He replaces them. He replaces them. Amazing. You know, when I became a Christian, 
when I first became a Christian in secondary school, God brought me uh, somebody called Betty. You know, she taught me how to have my quiet time. And, you know, what I can remember is like, it's almost like a huge gap in my life. Because yeah, I was a half caste. I am a half caste. In Ghana, we call myself half caste. So, like, it was like, oh, you are a foreigner. You are not from here. And there was a huge gap in my soul. Yeah. And then I found a group that liked me, that thought I was, I mean, they just, they just were happy. Church people always happy. Ah, it's, it's, it's one of the highlights of my life. Yes. So I, I, I don't forget her and the group that she brought into my life. There was a, there was a group of people. That's, that's what it's like to find Jesus. And Jesus himself was, you know, he was ministry and his mother was somewhere and said, we, we want to see him. Can we see him, please? We, not, we need to speak to him. He's our relative, you know. That's, our, that's my boy. And that's why and Jesus said, Hey man, oh, don't talk to me. Don't listen, my brother, man. Who's my brother, man? Who's my sister, man? These who keep the word of God. Amen. These are my new sisters. Amen. This my, I got a new mama. Amen. I'm sure some of the ladies who were ministering to Jesus, they were like mothers, they were caring for him. Yeah. Because see, a lady, you a, a lady is like um is like a is like a is like a, a, a person who wears different uniforms. You can wear the uniform of a strange woman. Wow. God forbid. You can wear the uniform of a sister. Yeah, like a sister is like a friend and she's like, hey, 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 hey. You know? Then you can wear the uniform of a mother. Where you're like comforting and kind. You know, mothers are like, you know, that's why we like our mothers. They seem to understand. They seem to know everything. Yeah. They seem to look after little problems. Yeah. When daddy doesn't agree, they always agree. Yeah. Is it not true? Yeah. So, you, you, in the spirit, you can be like a mother. Yeah, to somebody. You become like a mother. You understand. You help. You bless. You provide. Wow. There's many things you can be. So, decide as a lady, I'm not going to be a strange woman god forbid i'm going to be either i'm going to be a sister i'm going to be a mother jesus was talking about my mother this is my mother among his disciples jesus had people following him in luke chapter 8 in verse 1 you see the people that followed jesus look at it and afterward he went into every city all right every village showing the glad tidings okay of the kingdom and the 12 disciples were with him and verse number two and certain women, yeah, they were always with him, which had been delivered of evil spirits. And he mentioned a few of them, all right? Number one, Mary, called Magdalene. She was also at the cross. She was there in good times and bad times. Yeah. She, out of whom went seven devils. She was grateful to Jesus for setting her free. And then verse four, jo- and the next one, Joanna, wife, people's wives, people's wives. It turns out Jesus didn't believe in marriage. He didn't believe in marriage. They're married women. Serving him, doing many things. No, no, leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it. Doing various things. Amen? Amen. And Susanna. Yeah, Susanna. So I'm sure when Jesus said, this is my mother. Was my, I'm sure these, these, some of these people, people's wives, people's mature women, you know. No, go back, go back. And, and many others. Many others. Yeah, that's Jesus. Jesus was a young man. At 29, he started. He was 29 years old. Who's my, who's my mother? Who's my mother? This is my mother. This is my mother. These are my, mother. These, are my, these are my brothers. This is my brother. These are my sisters. So some of the ladies were mothers. Some were sisters. Some were brothers. No father. God was his father. Yeah. Are you still around or you are leaving? This this is Master Seed. Forget about the people that God is separating you from. Glory to God. How many have realized that God is separating you from people? 
raise up your hand and realize that even your own biological family you sometimes not so close to them why why what what links you to your biological family the blood of what is your name a doom a doom the blood of a doom and the blood of jesus which one is better quality blood so you are linked by a higher quality something we are linked by the blood of jesus we made into a family by the blood of jesus yeah believe it believe it believe it you don't believe it you live to find out that it's real and accept it you know it's like a woman who adopts a child you have to accept the child because sometimes you can adopt the child but you don't accept the child you have to ac- accept that children come by different means sometimes they come by being born sometimes they come by being adopted even we we've joined god by adoption I mean, Charlie, like we couldn't be born naturally we were born of the devil and then we were adopted by christ mercy mercy <laughs> yes mercy so we are all enjoying adoption yes so you need to accept your new adopted fellow sparrow lonely sparrow greet your nearest lonely sparrow and say hey sparrow i'm glad to be standing by your side on the rooftop i plan to be here for a long time i hope you're going to be here with me Yes, I hope you are going to be here with me. Amen. Isaiah 51, please. Isaiah 51, please. Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness. Are you following after righteousness? Are you looking at the scripture Isaiah 51 verse 1? Yes. Hearken to me, you that follow after what? Righteousness and ye that seek the Lord. Are you seeking the Lord? Yes. What did he say? Look unto the rock from whence you are hewn. In other words, look at where you came from. Look at your origins. Look at the source. Look at the place that brings all of us into existence. Okay, and learn something from it. All right? Are you ready to learn something from it? Now, what do we learn from it? You see it in verse 2. He says, look to Abraham. And what do we see in Abraham? Your father, and to Sarah that bear you. I called him alone. That's what you learn from it. He was lonely and alone in his calling. Learn that you stand alone. You stand alone. You stand alone. God calls you. You stand alone in your call. If you happen to meet fellow sparrows and say, Wow, I didn't know I was going to meet you here. I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know you were going to be here. But I'll come in anyway. Whether you came or not. Whether anybody came or not. I was coming and I'm here. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, listen, if you don't go serving the lord i'm going anyway and i'm sorry i may not know you anymore i may not see you in this life but i'm going anyway Now I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. Amen. Amen. Now, Genesis chapter 12, verse number 1. Now the Lord said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house. Oh, Philippians 1.29, what does it say? Do you remember Philippians 1.29? Philippians 1, for it is given unto us in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe, but also to suffer for his sake. Are you ready to suffer for his sake? Beautiful. 
Now, Genesis chapter 12, quickly. Quickly. Beautiful. Now the Lord has said to Abraham, Get thee, and he said to Abraham, Sarah, Lot, and no. He said to who? Just to Abraham. Get thee out of thy country. Hey, God. From thy kindred. Hey, God. And from thy father's house. Oh, Lord. Unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee. And make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. Never fight your lonely call. Because it's a call for great blessings. God has blessed me so much in serving him that today I don't know the price of McDonald's Big Mac meal. It's true. I don't know what it costs. Like, it doesn't really matter what it costs. Because I've got a hundred people who are ready to buy me a Big Mac meal. How many will buy me a Big Mac? And I would have a hundred Big Macs. So when God, when God is calling you, don't fight it. Relax. Take your time. Yeah. Don't fight it. Relax. He's calling you to bless. He said, I called him and he said, leave your country and I will bless you. I'll make your name great. Most of us, our names are not great. Like, when your name is mentioned, like, who is that? Who is that? Pardon? Never heard of her. Never heard of him. Wow. But as you follow God, these are the things. He says, so if you resist it, you are resisting your life. You are saying, hey, greatness, go away. I don't want to be great. Prosperity, can you please leave my presence? Just get out of my life. God forbid. God calls you alone. And why is he calling you? Why is he calling you? God said to Abraham, Amazing. Amazing. Genesis twelve. Now Gen to Genesis eleven twenty nine. Genesis eleven twenty nine. Abram and Nahor took them wives. Now, now let's let's look at Genesis 11 verse 27. uh, Genesis 11 26 or 25. Nahor lived after he begat Terah. Terah is the father of Abraham. I have somebody in my church in Accra called Terah, father of Abraham. Yeah, Terah. He lived 70 years and begat three boys. He had three boys. Who are the three boys? Abraham. Verse 27. Abraham had three boys. Uh, Terah, sorry, had three boys. What are their names? Verse 26. Abraham, Nahor, and Haran. Three boys. Huh? He was blessed. (coughs) Notice verse 27. These are the generations of Terah. Terah begot three boys. Who are the three boys? Verse 27. Abraham, Nahor, and Haran. Now Haran had a son. And Haran's son was called what? Lot. Now Haran died. Okay. So now there were, there were still three, but it was father, father, and somebody's son. Do you get it? Yes. Are you with me? Yes. Father, father, and somebody's son, like the three families. Okay? 
Now, Abraham and Nahor took wives. The name of Abraham's wife was Sarah. And the name of Nahor's wife was Milka, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milka, and the father of Iska. But Sarah was barren. She had no child. So Abraham had no child. His other brother, Haran, had a child, Lot, and died. And Nahor also had children. Now, verse 31. Terah took Abraham, his son, Lot, the son of Haran, okay, his son's son, Sarah, his daughter-in-law, his son's Abraham's wife, and went with them from Ur of the Chaldees into the land of Canaan. And they came unto Haran and dwelt there. And the days of Terah were 250 years. And Terah died in Haran. Confusing because Haran is the name of also one of Terah's sons. Isn't it? Yes. Terah had three sons. 27. Look at verse 27. You need to look at it because it helps you to sort of stay with the thing. Do you see? Abraham three sons. Terah had three boys. Abraham, Nahor, Haran. So, here we are. One of the three boys is dead. Left with two boys. Isn't it? Now, Genesis chapter 12. Verse 1. Now the Lord selects out of this group. (laughs) This group. Nahor, Terah, Haran, Lot. This, that, that. And he to speak specifically to Abraham. And say, Abraham, get out of your country and your kindred, from your kindred, your relatives, one of whom is your nephew, your brother's son. And he disobeyed that part. All the problems he had came from going with the family people. Amazing. Yeah. And I will make you a great nation. Not your family. You are making you a great nation. And I'll bless you. And I'll bless them that bless you and curse him that curseth thee. And in, in thee all the family shall be blessed. Verse 4. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken and lot with him. And Abraham was 70 and 5 years old. Now, Abraham took Sarah, his wife. And Lot, his brother's son. So, in other words, two thirds of the family went. Two thirds of the family, because there were three: Nahor, Abraham, Abraham, and Haran. Haran was dead, so it was Lot. So the three was Lot, Abraham, and whatever. So instead of Abraham going, he said, "Oh, Charlie, let's go." And then Lot went. You want to be Lot? You may not want to be Lot. You may, you may not want to be Lot. You may not want to be Lot. You may not want to be Lot. Yes. Sodom and Gomorrah. You heard of Sodom and Gomorrah. The fire that came down. Lot was staying there. Yes. Lot was, that's where Lot was staying. <laughs> yes, that's where Lot. It was Abraham had to go and Saved, they had to pray. So, one of his greatest prayer topics were because of Lot staying there. Then he had to send an army to go and fight to rescue Lot. So, almost all, all the crisis came from not accepting to be alone. Tell your neighbor, I'm accepting to be alone from today. From now, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, I want us to see the blessings. It's a nice verse, Genesis chapter 12. Are the people behind? I don't see the people behind. You know what? Yeah, I don't see them. I don't know whether they are with us. Check. Can I have the security guys to go around and check the guys? I, I'm not so sure whether I see the people. Are they, are they with us? This side or this side over here? This, this, these people here, are they with us? Dreaming? Sleeping? Okay. Everybody go back to your seat. I want to see people. (laughs) 
All right, we're going to take a break soon. Oh. All right, Genesis. Please be with me in Genesis. Please be with me in Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. What does it say? I will bless thee and make thee a great nation, and I'll make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Now, when you are really blessed, And when you've accepted to be alone with God, you become a blessing. You see, most people receive a blessing, but they are not a blessing. Yes. Most people receive a blessing, but they are not a blessing. And it's far greater to be a blessing than to receive a blessing. Who is greater? If I can give you, if I can give 10 people iPhones this afternoon, I can take 10 of you and say, iPhone X, 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 X. X." If I have that, it means that I have the ability to have at least 11 iPhone Xs, my own and 10 other people's. And then you have the power to just receive a blessing, which is one iPhone. Who is greater? The one who can give and be a blessing is far greater. So your 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 desire must be to be a blessing. But often God blesses you to the extent to which you will be a blessing. And if he can see that you are going to obey him and be a blessing, he blesses you so much much so that you can be a blessing. Yes. If I know that, if I give it to Marcella, so much she will give to 10 people, then I'll load her with the 10 iPhones. But if I know that she's just going to keep it herself, go and call her family and say, look, go and sell this and let's get some money and have some, ten, that's 10,000 pounds. That's 10,000 pounds. Yeah. So I know that she's just going to keep it to herself. So maybe your villa will give it to the 10 other people. Yeah. I shouldn't do what? I should get her 11 phones since she's going to share. And maybe this one is going to, is this Fenima? She's going to also uh, give, and I'm actually, she's found, I found that she's got like even a bigger heart. Let me give her 20 iPhones. Hey! Yeah, I'll give her 20 iPhones. Wow. The, the, I, once I can sense how much the person can do and will do, I, I load. Yes. So he says, I will be a blessing. I will bless you and you will be a blessing. Yes. That's, that's what, actually, that's what we all use to decide what to do, to give to people. We all, we all do that. Yeah. We all do that. Sometimes even when parents are dying, they say, you know, I'm going to give you this, but remember your brothers. I want you to give to your brothers and look after your sisters, your brothers. If they need anything, look after them. I know you will. But I don't want to give to this one because if I give to her, she, she's going to, not going to give it. God forbid. Any bad prophecy in this section, Lord, we cancel it in Jesus' name. Are you with me? Yeah, 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 yeah. So now God is looking for first lovers who are going to be a blessing. And then he's going to call them and bless them so much that they will not just say, I am blessed, 
but they will be a blessing. Maybe could that be why God saved you? He saved you. He saved me. Saved us from all time. What about others? What about the others? Saved you. He saved you. Saved me. What are we doing for the others? Ah, Lord, maybe that is why you chose this guy and saved him from sulfuric acid. Because you knew that he would be a great blessing to others. Whereas if this guy had been saved, he would have kept it to himself. So maybe just let me leave him with his sulfuric acid and let me, if I'm going to save only two people, I better find some two people that are going to really share it. Maybe that's why he saves people. Wow. 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 So could that be why God's, how many girls here been saved from a boy? Like how many remember a boy you've, you've been saved from? Like, the boy was destroying you. Huh? It was toxic. Toxic? Yes. I thought I was the one, but all along, I was the side one. Yeah. You thought you were the one? I was the one. I was acting as a wife. He stays with me cooks for him, looked after him at the age of 18, and he had another one. Ah. Hey! He saved you! He saved me. You are the side... You are the side chick. There was a main chick and a side chick. Yes, he was with her for two and a half years. But we were together for 10 months in those two and a half years. We lived on different sides of England. I went to uni in Twickenham. She went to uni in Brighton. We would never have crossed worlds. It was far. Yeah. She was the plant. She was the what? The plantain to the jollof. Say again. She was the plantain to the jollof. What, what is the meaning of plantain to the jollof? The main thing is a jollof. And the, the plantain is there on the side. Yeah. That you have to complement the jollof. But if the plantain wasn't there, you could still eat the jollof free. sense you've been saved from something and why did God save you blessing to others yes. that's actually the main reason why he saved you. like like that is the reason yeah that's the reason it's, it's like somebody who has a lot of money and God blesses with a lot of money and he forgets why he's been given all that he's been given it's like oh let them work hard uh, I'm not, I'm not, I don't work to just throw away my money. And I work very hard for what I get. I earn it, you know. It's a, a way of thinking. You can just write letters to me and ask me for money. You know how hard I work. I should send you pounds. I should send you euros. I hear you need some. Do you think we just, money just drops on us from the sky? Money grows on trees. Huh? You just get up and you every day just send them around. Like, Can you send me some money? I need money. I'm an animal. Huh? There's a mind. There's a, there's a way of thinking. You know? And now that when God blesses you and loads up your whatever, there's actually a reason. I will bless you and you shall be a blessing. So now that he saved you, he saved me. He saved us for all time. What about others? Ooh, he saved you, he saved me. But what are we doing for others? Yes. What are we doing?
we doing for others? Multitudes. 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 Multitudes are waiting. Many girls just in like the you. Valley of decision. Waiting, waiting for you. Waiting, waiting. They're waiting. They're hoping to hear the gospel. Hoping, they're hoping to hear. They don't know Jesus. Many guys Christ. like you. Take it. They are lost and dying so lost. Oh, 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 yeah. He saved, he saved you. He saved me. Mm-hmm. He saved us for all time. What about others? What?